All right, Kevin, this is the biggest poker game of your life, and you have nothing. Your opponent has bet the pot. It's time to give up. Time to fight another day. Wait. Wait, what the fuck are you doing? Oh, my God, no. Oh, my God, that's most of your stack. You have nothing. Oh, my God, this is not good. Oh, please hit a 10. Please hit a 10. Nope. Oh, shit. We have nothing. There's over 50K in the middle. This is one of the biggest pots we've ever played. Oh, my God. Time to give up. You still have 30K. Let's chill. You know, we want it. We don't want to but No. No. Don't do it. Don't do it. Fuck off. No, no, no. Here we are. The biggest game of my life. 100, 200. You can feel the tension in the room. It's going to be excitement. There's going to be some blood. Uh, I'm going to be sitting down just right away, buying in. We got Corey and Michael here, the two dealers looking after us. And I'm going to get in an early bribe. We got a hundred ball for each of them. Oh, thank you. Just thank to you. start it off, just so they can send some playable cards my way. Thank you, sir. Yeah, you're welcome. And uh, let's go. It's going to be a good video. First hand of the session. Let's go. I have ace eight offsuit in the cutoff. Is this a raise? No, it's definitely not, <laughs> but I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go wide in every single spot. I'm coming in with an alpha mindset and I get a couple of callers. Flop, deuce, queen, eight, two spades. Okay, I connect. Checks to me. I'm going to check. I don't want to build a huge pot with this hand and it checks behind. All right, turn, three of spades. Okay, I'm really liking him in this situation now. I'm going to bet $1,000. I'm going to take a shot at it. And to my absolute surprise, JD to my left puts in a big raise. This surprises me. It's a weird line. It's a weird story. He checks the flop, now raises the turn. He's telling me he has a flush, maybe a set of threes, but that's kind of all that makes sense. So I'm gonna peel, we go to a river. The river, queen. This card doesn't change anything. He never has a queen here, right? He's never gonna raise a single one pair queen on the turn. So again, his story is he has a set of threes or a flush, that's it. I check and he bets massive. And while this is the first hand of the session and a slightly uncomfortable pot, I just got to think it through and make the decision. He's telling me as a flush. I just, I, I, the story's a little bit weird. The line doesn't really make sense. I'm going to put in the money and let's see it. Bang. He was bluffing and this is the best start I could have imagined. We're off and flying. Great start. I bought in for 40k and we're already north of 50. You want to look down at two good cards on the button every single time, and I look at a6 offsuit. Definitely good enough for a raise. Now Berkey he puts in the three bet, and against a lot of people I wouldn't do this, but it's time to fight. I four bet bluff my hand. I know Berkey's capable of three betting light, and I love to see the snap fold. I turn over the six, and he shoots me a little look. He's kind of surprised I put that much money in with the bad hand, and we win a nice one. The mad genius raises my big blind. I'm again, I'm here to defend, I'm here to mix it up. I'm gonna put money in with the 6-5 offsuit. Flop, okay, flop bottom pair, but I'm out of position. Now he bets. I, of course, am gonna call. Turn, Bink City, amazing, I make two pair. I actually think about leading, but no, I check it back to him. He bets again. Now this is a really interesting spot. Am I supposed to put in the raise? Oh, I'm not sure. I shy away from it and just call. And it's good news because he goes for thin value on the river. Credit to the genius. He goes for thin value in this spot, and I'm happy to call. We are absolutely cooking. I could not have pictured a better start to this show. Berkey raises, Robbie's in there, and I look at the beautiful King Jack of Clubs. I'm gonna three bet. A lot of people just call here, but again, I'm looking to build pots with good hands. I'm really going for it. And we see an ace high flop here versus the Berkster. Small bet, probably appropriate. Unfortunately, he continues. We're really trying to win it there. I end up checking the turn and he checks. And then on the river, I go for like a cute little block bet. You know, maybe we can get King Queen to fold. Maybe if he has a pair of like sixes, fives, we could fold. Uh, but unfortunately he raises. That's okay, we just let go. And our first loss of the session, it's gonna happen, but we take this one in stride. Remember that intro? Well, here it is, the potentially biggest poker hand in my career. I open the beautiful king-queen suited. Eric Hicks, the mad genius, bumps it up. I, of course, am going to take a flop. Don't want to four-bet this hand. Flop, interesting. Jack, nine, deuce. Okay, we got a gut shot. Enough for us to continue when he bets a uh, 3K. And here we are on the turn. An awful card. you think the hand would be over. I check, and he bets big. And literally, in my mind, I'm like, this hand is done. 
But then deep in my tummy, the dog started snarling. Maybe I can win this hand. He thinks I'm going to be tight. Let's see if I can use that to my advantage. I raise. Now I think this is a decent bluff hand. We block kings, we block queens, we block king jack. I mean, this is aggressive. Most of my money is in the middle here with just king high. So you don't want to do this all the time. Oh no, oh no, he of course calls. In my head, I'm screaming 10. It's bouncing around my noggin. Please let me get there. No, it's a board pairing jack. He could easily have a jack. In my brain, I literally say the words give up. I throw the white flag, but then the twinkle in my eye goes and I just think maybe I can win this hand. Maybe I can get him to fold. Would he fold an over pair? I don't know, maybe, but maybe he wouldn't. And then I say, fuck it, let's try. Oh, and the adrenaline was pumping. Oh my God, he doesn't even use a time bank and he folds queens. Incredible play from Kmart. He understands his image and he goes for the bluff. It looks so strong, he has to have it, right? But he doesn't. I can't believe we got this through. An absolute game changer. I mean, I had more money to reload, but this changes everything. Now I have a huge stack in front of me. Pause. Guys, I literally have goosebumps reading this voiceover, watching this session. Why does this mean so much to me? Because here's me as a kid. I grew up in Northern Alberta, the sticks. While we always had food and shelter from my family, we had very little money. I just remember the constant financial stress being so rough on my family. But there is a good side of it. It teaches you discipline. I mowed lawns. I sold soda out of my locker. While all the other adults went off to college to party, I was obsessed with finding an industry where I could insert my soul and make some money. It turned out to be poker. A couple thousand hours of Live 1-2 in Canada to pay the bills. I started a micro tournaments. I started making content in a basement with no money, no skills, didn't know anybody. So that's why this means a lot to me. Here on this show with this money in front of me, because I've grinded so fucking hard to make it here. And we're here. And we got a chance. We have a literal chance to spin it up in the poker world. In this hand, let's jump right to the river. All you guys need to know is we all saw a flop and nobody put in any money post flop. Now, Ozzy Al here, he's a good player. He's backdoored into trip aces and he's gonna bet, but I don't know he is a good hand. It's checked to him a million times. He could just be trying to seize the pot with all sorts of stuff. He easily could be bluffing. I legitimately think about calling with my pair of fives. Now he makes an interesting offer. I can pick a card. Before the 500 decision? Bucks. For $500, I can pick a card. Uh, I accept. If I see one card, I just think I can put the puzzle together. And there is no puzzle that needs to be put together because I flip over the ace and I have the easiest fold of my life. A hilarious situation. I've never bought a card before. I bought in for 40,000 and I have 80K in front of me. An absolutely fantastic start. I look down at ace, deuce of clubs. Nice, another playable hand. I raise. Now the mad genius, he likes to play pots versus me. He three bets the five, three of spades. Of course, I just see him putting more money in the middle. I don't really know what his hands have been. I am going to call. I thought about four betting. Actually, I looked up this chart. There is a little bit of four betting and folding, which I did not listen to. I put more money in and called, which is interesting. Anyway, let's see if Flop, flop, jack five, seven, club, club. Amazing, whenever you flop the nut flush draw, the world of possibilities is open to you. I check the mad genius bets. I could easily raise, very reasonable play, but I proceed with a call. Turn, deuce, I make a pair and that actually has some value in this situation. It could easily be the best hand. I check, Eric checks back, nice. I'm hoping for a river club. It's not a club, but it's the backdoor two pair. Very interesting. Normally I would be looking to bet, but I think this card is great for Eric. He can value bet ace king, ace queen, ace 10, or he could bluff this card. So I check it to him. I'm very upset that he checks back because I know my hand was good. Sure enough, he had weak showdown value and I win another $19,000 pot. This is Matt Berkey. Poker pro, solve for why, podcast host, etc. He's been around poker for a long time and he's a tough cookie. He raises to under the gun with 10 eight of diamonds. I look down at the beautiful pocket tens in late position. What's my strategy? Build pots with good hands. So I'm gonna bump it up. 
To my surprise, I pick up Eric Hicks and Ozzy Al. I have a feeling Eric might be in there. He plays a lot of pots. I didn't know he was as light as King Two of Diamonds. But anyway, so we have a juicy pot here. Lots going on. Let's see a flop. Nine, four, seven, club, club. Now this is a bad flop for my range. It's hard for me to have sets or two pairs. I have the over pairs, but I'm just a little bit cautious. And Berkey sniffs that out. He understands this, so he takes his hand, which is a good equity hand, and he leads. Well, I'm not going anywhere, I call. The other players fold, and it's me heads up versus Berkey. The turn is very interesting. It's another nine. Berkey senses he can win this pot, and he keeps betting. It's kind of hard for me to trip, so I guess I can maybe have it. Anyway, I'm not folding my hand. It's too good. I call. The river is the jack. Overall, I think this is a safe card for me. But to my surprise, Berkey loads up the clip. He bets the pot. And this is tough. This guy is aggressive. He could easily be bluffing a big river spot. These are my favorite spots in poker. When a guy puts in a big bet on the river and you just have to decide, does he have it or not? I think Berkey's going to get paid here. Streamer's kind of talking himself into it. You hear the mental gymnastics going through his head. I'm so torn. I'm so torn. What is he going to do? $27,000. That's like winning the big 22 this on Poker like Stars. Like Three or four times. And he's out. Seven, eight, pot, Great fold by the streamer. Guys, in this video, I'm giving away $1,300 to one of you. Well, it's Phil Helmuth's money. Let me explain. Phil invited me to LA. I woke up the morning of the game and I heard that he had quit the show. I was pissed. I went after him on Twitter, maybe a little too harshly, but I was hurt. I was really upset. Now this tweet blew up. It got almost a million views and credit to Phil. He called me minutes after I tweeted it to talk to me. He apologized. He felt really bad. He explained he had some big losses. He was in a bad mental state. He just needed to rest and recoup. And guess what? He offered to pay for my flight and hotel, a very kind gesture. Minutes later, 1300 USD hit my PayPal account. It's just an incredibly kind gesture by Phil. I think we're friends, we understand each other, and we're gonna play very soon in the future. And because of that, I'm giving away that money to one of you. So a Phil Helmy sponsored giveaway. In the comments below, comment your poker story. Are you new to the game? Are you trying to grind through one, two? Have you just started playing tournaments? Tell me your story. I'm gonna pick one that touches my heart, and I'm gonna give away $1,300 of Phil Helmy money. Enjoy the rest of the video. Thanks again, Phil. Credit to Robbie for putting some money in. I actually called. This three bet scared me. I just called with my hand the Church of Ace King. And that lets Al come in. He comes in for a light four bet. I really think about just going all in. I really consider it, but we're super deep. We're like 1.7 million big blinds deep. So I decide to call. Let's see a flop. Now the flop is very interesting. King 10-9. I mean, he can have a strong hand, but this is really going to hit me. I have tens, nines, maybe even king, queen suited, slow plate aces. I have ace, like I have strong hands here. I'm very happy to see him check the flop. Now, I don't think I can go for tons of value, so I make a scared check on the turn. I don't know if this is right. River, though, I know I'm good once he checks twice, and I think I want to go for a big bet. I really put him on queens or jacks, and I think he might have to call now, so I go for big value. Sadly, he snap folds. I wish I could have won more, but hey, it's a nice pot. It's a huge hand. I'm up about $50,000, so I put the double straddle on. Eric is gonna take that opportunity. He raises queen five of spades. I defend my 10-8. And guess what? We both connect on this flop. He flops huge. He has a nutted hand and I have middle pair. So Eric's a good player. He knows he needs to build the pot immediately. He bets big. I'm not going anywhere. I call. Turn, offsuit, deuce. Fascinating spot in poker where the turn card doesn't interact with either of our ranges. Advantage Eric usually. He bets big, but I know this. He could do this with so many hands. Like he's putting me in a spot. I really can't fold this versus a capable player. I call, really would love to make trips or two pair. No, river brick again. So the same dynamic on the turn, it's here on the river. He could have it or he could easily be bluffing. And when he bets here, he's usually gonna go to a big size. Sure enough, he finds it. He bets the pot. Now, this might look like an easy to fold to some people, People, but it's really not. He could have tons of bluffs. He could have six, seven, nine, seven, nine, ten, jack, ten, ace, ten. I think, I think, I think, and I tank. Ultimately, the ten of hearts is a really bad hand here for me. I don't know. I just felt like he had it. So I went with my read. Thankfully, I was right. We again lose a pot, but we could have lost a lot more. 
Hand after hand, these are the biggest pots I've ever played, and we're not done yet. There's some more action coming. I raised King Nana Clubs. Berkey defends 6-3 offsuit. All right, Berkey, he's coming after me. That, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. And I think a big mistake trying to outplay me with a bad offsuit disconnected hand. Anyway, he flops really good. I flop really good. And I really want to put this hand in my check back range. I think a lot of people just bet flush draws. It's really nice to check it back, and it's disguised if you make the flush later on. Turn, ace. I love this bet from Berkey. He overbets the pot, really, really putting my hand in a tough spot. Well, not this hand, but putting my range in a tough spot. I'm going to continue, never, ever folding. I'm praying for a river club. Bang, we get there. I have a really disguised strong hand. Now it's up to Berkey. He is absolute dust six high. He is the best bluffing hand you could ever find. He goes for it. He bets really big. Now I'm thinking, yeah, I have the second nuts. The board is paired. He could have a full house but not really, it's kind of tough. I need to go for value, I raise, and I hope Berkey puts the money in. I hear him say, God, I wish I wasn't bluffing, because I don't fucking believe you. As predicted, my flush is really disguised. Oh, I wish he had something, he probably would have put more money in. Another nice win. We're deep in the show now, and in my mind, I'm gonna take my foot off the gas just a little bit. I'm still gonna play hands, but I'm not gonna be on edge like I was earlier. I'm willing to chill a little bit and maybe book a big win. But then I look down at King King. There's no chilling with this hand. I'm gonna bump it up to 4,500. Now it goes back to Yang, and I'm a little surprised to see him just call. And I looked this up, and I guess you're just supposed to call here a lot with Queens. Deep cash game, it's weird. This is a surprise to me. Not really my area of expertise, I'm a tournament player. Anyway, we see a flop. Kings versus Queens, it's a great spot. Great flop, money goes in on the flop. The turn's scary, it slows down the action a little bit. And credit to the driver here. I mean, two streets of value does go in for me, but he could have easily lost more. It's kind of a big win for him to put that little money in the middle with a dominated hand. So well done to him. He's gonna check. Yeah, it's like all on the Gets away for the stone minimum there. Foot is off the gas a little bit, but I'm still gonna play pots. I three bet ace jack offsuit and we get action from Yang. We're out of position, let's see a flop. Now it's not a good flop and I check owl bets. But the thing is, in no limit hold'em, you just gotta fight. You just can't give up with like over cards and back doors and stuff. So I'm gonna put some money in and try to defend this hand. Turn is the deuce, an absolute brick. At this point, if he bets, I'm probably done with this hand, but he checks and look at that. I've backdoored into the wheel. I love this. It's really hard for him to have a six. Remember, this is a three bet pot. How can I get a little juice out of this pot or maybe get him to spaz out? I decide on 10%. Commentator thinks it's pretty hilarious and I'm kind of upset when he folds, but sick, another 20K plus pot. And with that, the biggest game of my life draws to a close. I won almost every hand. I picked up good cards. I executed. I made good decisions. And it just went really well. And in poker, it's easy for it not to go well. But sessions like this are you just truly have to treasure them. I could not be happier. I was in for 40,000. The final graphics, I left. Uh, the bike got it wrong. I actually cashed out $111,000. They overestimated my win a little bit. But I mean, it's pretty fucking awesome. What a win, man. What a win. And with that, my LA trip is over. I'm exhausted. I met so many people, played some big hands, but I'm happy. I mean, how can you not be? Falling asleep next to 150,000 US dollars.